do do super mario maker 2 we're doing a little I, I don't know if apollo has announced it or like this is all tentative okay he invited me to play in a one-off checkpoint league one hour thing this week so I'm going to play some Mario Maker 2 so to remind myself how the game works. Take me to the course world, please. Now, I don't know. I haven't heard any more about it since I was invited and said yes. But I would assume until I'm told otherwise that it is indeed taking place. Take me to courses. How do I find Apollo's courses? I feel like I should play his course from last week. I want you to do all of my work for me. Do I type in ID? Do I hit plus? And go to... <laughs> you need the course code? Or maker ID? Anybody offhand know Apollo's uh, maker ID? <laughs> Shouldn't I just be able to find it on my... Oh, oh my God, thank you. Here's one of them. I don't know which one it is. Well, let's take a look. LK4 C62 SGG. That's him. That's that's we we just got access to the whole uh portfolio. It's it's like we're in uh, Sky Castles right now. So what the uh, heck, what did they play last week? I'm sure somebody watched this. I was not here. It would be one of the TCL2 levels, I'm assuming. 2.6 was last week. Lousy lifts two. All right, clear rate of 0.3%. Average uh, play time, I don't know. Average number of deaths to clear, roughly 300. Let's have some fun. Now, how the hell do you play Mario Maker 2? You, you always hold this button to run. Oh, you know what? Should I be holding my... I don't know. I got the, the Joy-Cons are all... <laughs> it's a new era. I remember this. You do a little of that. Okay, good start. Left moves left. Right moves right. Wait, I need a tutorial that's like, Hey, fucking samurai. You just woke up. Use WASD. <laughs> to, to move around. Yeah, use the right stick. Let's make sure your vision cortex is... Applied properly. Can you look at this stuff for me? Right, it looks like it's working well. You must not remember what happened. You were fighting the final boss and you lost. We're working on it. I mean, this is literally... This is the first time I've played this in like a year, two years. Something like this, something like this, something like... Woo -woo. Show me your new modules work by pressing E on top of this apple. But don't eat it. It's been poisoned like everything else in this sick world. Hey, uh, so people are saying muted, but they're just wrong, right? It's just quiet, which is the way I like it. KC and the Sunshine Band? Correct. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Plus, I wouldn't want to be too loud, because as we know, loud doesn't equal funny. Loud equals automatically not funny. Ew, we're making it. Hang on, I didn't even change, like, my game name. Did I? Wait, people said funny Blood Bowl update? No, I did change my game name. Honestly, you guys are so bad lately, like, at being right. Could you, like, I'm, I'm just embarrassed. I'm used to being backseated, but at least, like, the backseating is apt. At least it's correct. But lately, people have been, like, muted. It's not muted. Oh, this is a funny-looking Blood Bowl 3 update, but then it's not Blood Bowl 3. It's Super Mario Maker 2. They're completely different games. It's not a good start, I would say. <laughs> I'd go knight e5 here. You Trust me, you don't want to play chess against me. I practiced a little bit on the airplane. I beat the level 3 of 3 difficulty airplane AI. 
every single time. You don't want the smoke. I'm telling you, you don't want the smoke. Play Hive. It's another abstract strategy game like chess. I'm too busy. I'm, I've got a meeting tonight with my Polytopia tutor. Okay, we, we obviously did not know that that was coming, but that's we're doing good stuff. Hive is amazing. Can I just say that it's... And this is just genuinely not fair. I... When people tell me a strategy game is good, I... Usually that's a great indication that I'm not going to enjoy playing it. People always say stuff to me, like we'll, we'll talk about board games and they'll be like, oh, you gotta play this board game. Then they come out with a digital version and the tutorial is 70 hours long. And then I'm like, oh, it's a little complicated. And they're like, no, actually you're wrong. It's one of the easiest board games ever made. Like, sure, it's no Monopoly. <laughs> it's no Monopoly, but, you know, once you play, like, seven or eight rounds and you, you watch the first couple of seasons of it on um, Board Game Geek's YouTube channel, then you'll start to pick it up. You could play it, like, an amateur level at that point. Are you talking about Gloomhaven? I'm talking about all of them. The, the board games that I like the most are ones where people say, oh, yeah, that's fun if you're a little kid. Like, that's how people talk about, ooh, ooh. Like Sushi Go. People are like, yeah, Sushi Go is a fun little diversion. I'm like, I could play that shit for hours. <laughs> People are like, oh, this is a great game for like a 28-year-old systems engineer. I'm like, well, then go play it with some 28-year-old systems engineers. My ass is going to be over by the snack tray. I will be eating... Sliced medium cheddar cheese because half the people at the board game event are extremely picky eaters and don't even like mozzarella. There will be some plain Ritz on the side and there will be a, a vegetable platter with a space for dip in the center. Inexplicably, all the dip will be gone. 30% of the carrots will be gone. None of the other vegetables will be gone. I don't get it. The, the ratios were like, they were very meticulously placed there, but they don't go down in equal numbers. The celery is always like, I, I, I'm realizing we're back in the Mario banter era here. If I had to say, not best vegetable, don't slander me. Celery, one of the most underrated vegetables out there. It's, it's a decent tasting vegetable. It's got insane dip ability. A necessary part of a mirepoix in soups goes hard in like a ooh, in a in a curry even okay we're we're getting there. I would take celery over over carrots most of the time, or at the very least, if you gave me one of those like grocery store vegetable trays, I would go carrot celery, carrot celery, carrot celery. I wouldn't do like six carrots to a celery the way that you know I feel like the average gamer does. I, I, I very much enjoy a celery. Broccoli? Well, like, that's the problem with the grocery store tray is that broccoli is a great vegetable, but raw, raw broccoli is not good. <laughs> I'm getting the, the librarian's seal of approval. Thank you, thank you. It's just crunchy water. It's negative calories. I literally don't care. It tastes good and it's great for dipping. I, you could you could tell me it's made by the Nestle Corporation in like an emerald mine in Lesotho, and I would be like, I'm still like I'm not. I would probably adjust my consumption habits somewhat. I would try to buy like fair trade celery, but I would still get it from time to time. Ooh. Did you know that San Pellegrino is made by Nestle too? It's a huge dub for me as somebody that doesn't drink San Pellegrino because it's the rare thing that I can feel superior to other people who do like San Pellegrino. I've always been more of a... I came on late. I'm more of a neo-seltzer drinker like a, like a LaCroix, an Aha, a Bubbly, for example. 
Vancouver's own spark moth. Oh! <laughs> Peloton is owned by Nestle. Peloton is owned by the public. It's a publicly traded corporation. And they're owned by less of the public than ever before. That's not really how stock prices work, but it made the joke kind of funny, I think. Ooh, oh, they, they skipped one. I'm just surprised. Celery gets, like, way more hate than I feel like it deserves. Like, I, I feel like it was a core vegetable when I was a child. And as, as now, like, a... Let's not say niche vegetable, but it's, like, a... It, it gets a lot of hate. Kate does not like celery at all. I, I don't eat it that much as a result. Kind of yucky. How could it have no taste but taste bad? Like, that's what I'm... I'm struggling with right now. But people say the same thing about cucumber. They're like, cucumber is just crunchy water. I, I like water. I like cucumber. These Joy-Cons are actually destroying my thumb. I don't know if I need the holder or if I should be trying Pro Controller analog stick just for, like, ergonomics. But I don't think I can... I don't think I can hold my hand like this. Because holding the run button is, like, a nightmare. Because the damn controller is so small. I think I gotta go Pro Controller. Anybody know how to... Um, Switch controllers mid-game on the Nintendo Switch. Anybody know? Is this thing wireless or do I have to plug it into the USB at the back? I gotta plug this thing. It's, it's clearly wired. I gotta just give me a second. I gotta plug this into the damn USB on the back of the thing. You do it on this screen. Okay. All right. What is this? Nintendo, what do you think? Just release a console with a keyboard and mouse. USB goes in right here. How am I supposed to play StarCraft on this thing? Hey, it worked. Paul's going off about the animal tier list. Honestly, he should be mad at the person who left the comment about how human beings can actually kill wolves easily. All you have to do is stick a... Uh, you offer your forearm to them, and then they can't resist biting it. And then you shove your fist down their windpipe, wrap your legs around their clavicle, twist to knock them onto their belly, and let nature take its course. Like... I didn't write the comment. I just read it because everyone was like, well, it's not even a comment. It was an article. Everybody was like, dude, you have a 0% chance against a wolf. And then I found an article that was like, actually, a decently fit human being would have a good chance against a wolf. They were like, the, the, the book is out on canines. Canines are used to pursuing their prey. They're not used to prey that necessarily fights back. So you exploit their weak mental by choking them with your own fist. I honestly thought the list was pretty good. You got to remember for like everybody that was like you'd an eagle would kill you. You like you stand no chance against a wolf. There were people that were like, um, hello. You really think you would rinse a fox? They have teeth, you know, you really you really think you would kill a pigeon? Like, I'm a little worried about society, honestly. <laughs> that there, there is at least like 5% of chat that that's like if it's me versus a fox, it's like a 50 50. It's a scary thought. Oh, I thought we were going to make it. I'm a pacifist. Okay, then just then then do the tier list and just be like, no, I would let this animal kill me. That could be a fun bit. I don't know if it could sustain like 180 minutes of content like we got yesterday doing it the honest way, but... I 
I just don't think it's going down like that for me. My main defense for most of the animals that I was like I could beat is like I just don't see it happening, which is not really scientific, but <laughs> I just I don't see it. Like, but it it worked both ways. It wasn't just like I don't see an eagle killing me. I do see it scratching me pretty bad, but I don't see it killing me. But the same token, I was like, I don't see me killing a camel. I, I definitely don't think I'm, I'm managing to suffocate it when it's got a neck that's like as thick as my thighs. I definitely don't think I'm like, you know, breaking through its uh, rib cage and like ripping his heart out of his chest or something like that. Like the camel is just, it's, I don't have the necessary offense to get over its defense stat. People, I, was it in Dan's chat? I think it was. Someone said animals would wash humans on physical 100. I say if you, in individual events, yes, animals would wash humans in physical 100, okay? But then their example was like a sloth could do the hanging on challenge longer than any human. And that like might be true. I don't know. I'm going to assume that it is. That's kind of like what their specialty is. But then I would love to see that sloth when they had to roll a 100 kilogram boulder up a ramp 140 times in a row. I'm going to guess that the sloth probably comes like dead last in that one. Even though there was a dude whose like entire body was, was shattered and broken. Oh, we were so close. Humans are like, we're, we're great all arounders, man. Because we built the fucking world. So, like, of course we're going to be good at all the shit that we've made. <laughs> if the event was, like, who could eat more heads of lettuce in 15 minutes? Joey Chestnut or, like, an average silverback gorilla? I'm taking the gorilla for sure. But, like, we're, we're the game master. Of course we're, we're good at the games. Now, a hot dog eating competition, I still take Joey Chestnut, I think. Yeah, people, I, I, listen, we're not all humans, myself included, are necessarily like the finest athletic specimens. That's not, you don't have to spec all into, you know, strength or agility in the modern world. We, we, we're an int driven world. We're a luck driven world. You know, the, you, there's, there's more than one way to make a successful character, right? But I think people underestimate humans. Like, isn't that the the, the mind-blowing fact that, like, everybody learns in high school? Which is, like, actually, we were goaded uh, hunters on the savannah. Because we don't run the fastest out of any animal, but we run pretty fast. And we can run longer than almost any other animal, at least, you know, in that habitat. So it's just like we would be hunting some kind of like like a, a wildebeest or something the wildebeest would get a nice head start and then like 30 minutes later we would just be back there like you know we'd have a pacer on the hunting team or something we'd be like surprise then they'd just be like I'd, i guess i'd rather die than run faster i'm not washed i'm not washed oh i really thought that that was it right there you're now further than Chib made it in an hour? Wait, really? <laughs> in an hour? Yeah. I'm not going to insult. It was more like 75 minutes. Oh, my God. I'm not going to insult Chib. Everybody's good at different things. You know, Chib is actually like from, from what he says, at least. Seems like he's kind of cracked at, like, Apex Legends, whereas I, like, can't do it. You've played this one before, though? I don't think so. This is, this is Lousy Lifts 2. I don't think I've played this one. From what he says? Yeah, this is the sequel. Why, why are people in chat so obsessed with being incorrect today? Why don't you just say things that are right instead of saying things that are wrong? Like, it's not that hard. By the way, you don't have to never be wrong. That's, that's forehead. What you have to do is just not say wrong shit out loud. 
The sky is red? Listen, I'm trusting you on that one, okay? Don't fuck with my eyes, okay? I have, a, I have an optometrist appointment later today. And I'll have you know, okay, that I'm, I looked up an article. How do optometrists make money? And it's like, apparently they make almost all of their money through selling frames and lenses. It's not through the actual eye test itself, which is like a marginal return on their, their time. So, rather than buy my glasses like I originally intended from Costco with the pharmacist or with the optometrist prescription that I'm going to get today, I'm going to go glasses shopping at the optometrist because it's a local business and they could use the support, okay? And I'm also like I learned my lesson. I hate these glasses. The glasses store that I went to, I was like, I mean, I, I think I told this story like a week ago. I was like, um, hey, I want like good lenses, anti-glare protection and stuff like that. And they were like, you don't need those. We'll just give you the cheap ones instead. And I was like, okay, you're the experts. Should have realized they're not the experts in glasses. They're the experts in selling glasses. So now, like, whenever I wear these glasses and the light hits them, I look like a, a smart character from anime where, like, the glare just goes, like, I mean, you can see, like, they reflect so much. And then I have the chromatic aberration where, like, any blue light does not, it doesn't appear to be coming from the source that it's actually coming from. Like, it, it moves around as I move my head. That's not going to make it. I'm definitely not going to get uh, transition lenses. I'm not that old. Please do. I'm definitely not going to get transition lenses. I'm kind of surprised that the transition lens is like still around in society. You have to go up a little bit. You've baited me, Apollo. I understand. You've baited me. My girlfriend got some. She's only 20. I'm... Okay, I see a lot of people in chat with transition lenses. I think as long as you're the only person that sees you move in or out of a building, then it's okay. If you only see them with the sunglasses active or the non-sunglasses that's okay but at any point in between it's just it's not a it's not a look that i that i like let's put it that way what a weird thing to hate on the fuck are you talking about people ad ask me questions about like random shit all the time i'm gonna sit here and be like that doesn't seem like it's worth giving my opinion on it'd be a quiet stream if we if we stop you know making a banter mountain out of a ban banter molehill It ain't about a look, it's so you can see in the sun. I have a pair of prescription sunglasses. I like them. I, I like a prescription sunglass. And the, like my glasses don't look cool. I just look like a normal guy. My sunglasses though look cool. I always feel like I'm like an F1 driver when I put them on. It's how I know like the summer season is officially beginning. Some people would be like, oh, it's when I put shorts on. Some people might be like, oh, I take the winter tires off the car. For me, it's when I spend 45 minutes trying to figure out where I put my sunglasses in September. That's when I know that the summer season has, has officially begun. Hang on, I'm thinking. Oh, I thought we made it. The sun only exists in the winter or in the summer, question mark. You don't wear sunglasses in the summer. It's not a vibe. I guess that's the other reason I wouldn't want transition lenses. I don't want to be the guy wearing sunglasses in the winter. It just is it's not the look I'm going for, you know? Who do you think I am, Bono?
Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Take a little break. You got to go immediately. He's still got it. People might be asking for a, a Costco free sample uh, inventory from, the, from yesterday's trip. People might not be as well. That's definitely plausible. Um, I, had, I sampled some mixed nuts and I sampled some Kirkland Signature Iced Tea. I saw a lady place a sample and I was first in line for it. And then I looked at it and it was a mayonnaise based potato salad. And I just said, no thanks. And I walked in the other direction. That it was not a banner day for samples, but the, the tea was refreshing at least. I'm not going to buy three kilograms of like sugar crystals to get Costco iced tea, but I don't, I don't mind having like a, a gulp of iced tea in the middle of my shopping trip. Whoops. Are you a take one sample guy? I, 95% of the time, I'm a one sample guy. I'm not a monster. Sometimes I will grab two samples and I'll give one to my baby in the cart, which I think is acceptable. I honestly didn't, I wouldn't care if people took like eight samples as long as they just grabbed them and then got their ass like out of the way. People like walk up, they, I don't know if it's just that they're, they, they don't realize that they're the VIP at Costco. Like you don't, you don't have to lie to get like a free sample. You literally can just like walk up, grab the cup and move away. But people go, oh, what's this? And then the worker has to be like, oh, it's mixed nuts. So there's cashews and walnuts in there and everything. And then they're like, oh, okay. And then they like grab one and eat it in front of the samples. And then they put the cup in the garbage and then they go, you know what? I think I'm going to grab one more to give to my wife. And like, they just, you, you don't have to, you don't have to lie to yourself. You don't have to lie to the, to the, to the person there. You just take it and move on. Oh, that's not doing anything. The worker's there to explain the product though. No, the worker's there to make money. They don't need to explain to me that this is a bag that has some walnuts, some cashews, and, you know, maybe like some raisins in it. The worker's there to pay for their, their lifestyle. There are some people, though, that I think love working the free sample area. Because there's one dude at our Costco that he sings. Whatever he's... Ooh. Whatever he's... Uh, leaving out for samples, he always like sings. Like he was making Saba Saro's frozen pizzas in a toaster oven and he was singing like a, like an aria. He was like, Saba Saro's frozen pizza. And you know, even still, I just walked up and grabbed one and then, you know, moved on with my life. I thought it was pretty cool though. I know, chat's so heartless. It's like, I'm, they're like, oh, I heard this story last week. Okay, watch somebody else. The rise of Squeaks has been like, it, the consequences have been insane. I'm happy for him as an individual, because I think he's a great streamer and one of the few people on this website that is actually funny. But he's cultivated like a, a chat that just bullies him and has led some freaks to think that that's like a normal demeanor to have. It's not a normal demeanor to have. Squeaks just lets you do it because he's a, he's a sub, okay? I'm not a sub. I'm a switch. Is that what it is? I don't <laughs> I'm not familiar with all the terminology, okay? Pause. Huh? So also a sub? Uh, shut your mouth, sweetheart. You know the gift, right? I'm not making this one. Ooh, I made it. I'm not making this one. He was in line. <laughs> oh, man. 
I thought you were an otter. Can't you be a switch otter? Again, I'm not totally familiar with the, the political compass here, but it definitely seems possible to me. I'm not touching this one. We could talk. We're all adults here. It's non judgmental. We're, it's all about I'm learning. Oh, well, I guess maybe we're not all adults here, but we're all supposed to be over the age of 13 at least. Plus, I'm not saying the F word. As long as we just dance around like the actual meat of the conversation with vague innuendos, then, the, you know. Chat GPT 3 is probably like three iterations away from being able to use context to figure out we're talking about something that should make this video mature content only. That's a tough jump. It depends on body size. See, that's crazy to me. Why should the bigger individual always be... Well, I guess because of physics, now that I think about it. <laughs> they don't? Okay, well, Chad, stop lying to me. It's not an area of expertise for me. It doesn't at all. See, they're lying to me. They're filling my head with ignorance. You just aren't an otter? How... What does my weight need to be for me to be an otter? Because I know that there's like a... There's another classification lighter than otter. There's like a super featherweight. Ooh. You need a swimmer's physique? Yeah, that's probably never going to happen. Is there anything between an otter and a bear? Or are you, is that just like guy? Is that just, I'm just a dude. I'm, I don't really, I don't have a, a team. I'm a free agent. <laughs> Husky? See, I'm not a husky. If anything, I, I, I'm probably more svelte than the average individual. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, wait, 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 wait. There's something called a small Z jump, right? Like, there's, there's levels to Z-jumps. I think I did a big Z-jump. I needed to do just a tippy-tap. Ooh! Oh, but that one's got to be a big one. Okay, I understand. Yeah, unless you're... I mean, that's the thing. Whenever we talk about this stuff, straight people are like, you shouldn't be talking about this. And it seems like most gay people are like, let me tell you everything about it. And I'm like, please do. I had no problem, you know, opening my horizons and learning a little bit. It's not like I'm, you're going to say something and I'm going to be like, Ew! <laughs> what? We're all here to learn, right? Well, no, not at all. Most of us are just here to laugh, but... You wish you were a wolf? Like the animal or the, is there, is this another archetype that I'm unfamiliar with? I don't think I have dog-like energy at all. If anything, I, I have more of like a cat-like energy, I think. Um, meow? I do have that dog in me though. Like I was, this is not a joke. Like, I, I'll play it up for a little bit of humor, but it's, it's like, this genuinely happens. Someone in front of me on the Peloton, if they're ahead of me by, like, five kilojoules, and it's a 20-minute ride, do not bet against me. Because, like, there's... I think they're just, like, enjoying their workout and, like, improving their physical health. I am... My goal was... That's, that's how it started for me. I got on the bike, improved my heart health... Maybe, you know, it's, and it's not a race day. It's just a training day. If someone's five above me, it became race day. And then when I pass them, I, like, in my head, I don't say it out loud, but in my head, I'm like, eat shit. Eat my ass. And they didn't do anything wrong. They're literally just riding the bike. But there's something wrong with me. 
Like, they don't even know that we're racing, probably. But I'm like, I'm mad at them. It's that, like, Michael Jordan attitude, but none of the talent. And sometimes, like, when I pass them, or when I'm... So, let me put it this way. Sometimes there'll be, like, 10 minutes left, and I don't think I'm going to pass them. I give them a high five, and then the high five is to be like, I respect you for being better than me at the Peloton. If they don't high five me back within a minute, I'm catching them. And then when I pass them, I'm giving them another high five. The subtext of that high five is you should have high five me back, you piece of shit. Now eat my ass. This, I can't stress enough. This all exists only in my head. There is no, it's not like they said, hey, let's race or anything like that. They literally just existed on the leaderboard. That can't be normal. Is very motivating though. <laughs> Small Z? Big Z. It's from the Dota. I don't think it's, I think the Dota just fed into it. But Dota makes you hate your own team. As much as the enemy. Like, you don't hate the enemy team. If anything, it, it, you become, like, um, reek, you know? Dota, all MOBAs, I think, turn you from Theon Greyjoy, where you are allied against a common enemy, into reek, where you're just like, oh, I wish, oh, I wish I was a Bolton. Oh, to have been born on the dire side instead of the Radiant. Oh, look at all these idiots that I'm, uh, that are on my team. If only I could have been on the other team. But then when you're on the other team, you're like, wow, these guys are idiots. I can't believe we won. I'm not like that when I drive, though. I saw some people be like, that's me at a stoplight. The only thing that, that makes me... I, I've never raced my car at a stoplight against anyone. But sometimes I do... Well, I guess this would be called racing. I get annoyed when, like, the car next to me starts, like, rolling before the light turns green. And then when the light turns green, they're slow to react to the, the change. Like, they're so eager to, to jump the gun, but then when the starting gun goes off, they're, like, looking at their phone or something like that. So if I see someone inching out in the, into the intersection like that and I'm beside them, I do get... Fuck off. <laughs> okay. I do get a little need for speed underground, and, like, the microsecond it turns green... I'm accelerating just to make them know. Like, I, I just want in their head, they're like, oh, and I even had, my wheels were moving and his were stationary and yet his reaction time is so much, so yeah, like I guess I'm a little crazy is what I'm trying to say. Maybe I'm a little, we, we, play, we all play these crazy games together just to pass the time. There's no harm, no foul. It's not like I'm going, ring, 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 ring. I'm just like, you know, passing them, going maybe slightly over the speed limit to make sure they know that they're my bitch. That's nothing right. And, and the best part about it is that I know that they are, but they don't care at all. So it's really a victimless crime. They don't even really recognize my existence in the slightest. Too busy thinking about like the new episode of Too Hot to Handle or something like that. But I know. <laughs> Actually, I think I might be getting crazier as I get older, too. This is also, <laughs> sorry, all the anecdotes from like the past two weeks that I have in my solitary, like baby walking time are coming back to me. Sometimes people will pass me when I have the stroller. And like, you may recall, but it's like two years ago that I used to say, like, um, you know, oh, you guys are lucky I have the stroller because otherwise, like, you think this is as fast as I could walk? I would be dusting you right now. That era is long gone. Now, if they don't make a, what I would consider to be a good effort to maintain a faster pace when they're in front of me, I'm happy to pass their ass back. And that is, like, the closest that you could probably ever see me come to an act of aggression in real life. If you pass someone while walking and then, like, a minute later they pass you back... Basically, they, 
with body language, they said, fuck you. You're not faster than me. You shouldn't have passed me in the first place. But you can't do anything because I got a stroller. So, you should, well, I don't know. If you were so eager to pass, maybe your ass should, should move a little faster then. Otherwise, get behind me. Draft. It actually improves your, your efficiency. If your ass didn't want to go fast, you just didn't want someone in front of you, too bad. I'm going to I'm going to make you work for it. I don't mind you being faster than me. It's just you've actually got to be faster than me. You can't just go faster than me for 2 seconds get in front of me and then walk slower than me. It took Chib 90 minutes to get here. Have we really have we regressed so much as a gamer that I'm being gassed up because I'm better than Chibli? Like, I made the semifinals of Checkpoint League One, okay? I qualified like second or something for the playoffs. I just choked against Justin in the semis because I have no mental. If I qualified first, though, I would have played against Jasky, and then I would have made the finals. No offense, Jasky. <laughs> But, like, I mean, like, come on. No disrespect. You're basically the Jerry Seinfeld of our generation. I hate that I agree with that, because Jerry is not a very sympathetic uh, character. But I, or, or individual, necessarily, such as. Oh, I, I was too slow there. I saw a quote from Jerry Seinfeld. I think he was on the Howard Stern show. And because Twitter doesn't work properly anymore, all these like viral tweets end up in my damn feed instead of shit from people I actually follow. So I'm always seeing shit that's like actually entertaining and interesting instead of just like, uh, not going live today, guys. Sorry. Um, which is fucked up. But anyway, um... Regardless, the quote was something like Jerry Seinfeld said, like, I'm always working on new material. And Howard Stern said, like, that sounds like torture to me. And then Jerry said, like, that's our blessing in life. When you're successful, you get to choose your own torture. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like some very self-aggrandizing shit that I would say for sure. That's, yep. All right. I, <laughs> you got me. <laughs> That sounds like some self-unaware shit that I would say Well, playing Mario Maker 2. Sure. Hang on, we gotta be quick and nimble and quick and nimble. Do you have to take some of the... Oh, that was just not smart. Do you have to take some of those in a double? Do you have to like two... Oh, smaller jumps. Apollo, he, he plays around with the form. That's why he's the, he's the goat, man. Like, he's actually, like, a Mario Maker artist. Ooh. Not that small. <laughs> On Hot Ones, how far do you think you would go? I think I would do, though. I, I don't have, like... I, I would say my spice tolerance is very normal. It's not crazy. Um, but it's also not zero. I think I would do all the wings. I would just be like, it would hurt a lot. It'd be really uncomfortable. But I think I would, I would, I would clear it. I would not like, I would not eat the last wing in its entirety. Or I mean, I guess you, it's a tradition to do the the last dab, right? I guess I would do that because I don't want to be bullied by the commenters. Closer. Who has ever not done them all? Who's the, is it DJ Khaled that had the one that was like barbecue sauce and, went, and tapped out? I haven't seen that much hot ones, honestly. I know it's like, it's must watch. But I, as you know, I'm not a huge YouTube guy. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Rick, Ricky Gervais also. I can't believe we made that one. We're already starting like a, a half cycle behind. I 
I mean, I don't think we should call anybody like a bitch for not eating <laughs> the, the wings on hot ones, but not even getting through like the Cholula wing is, is it is surprising if nothing else. Oh, that's tight. You got to be a little faster. I'm not, a, you know, I'm not a Ricky Gervais fan. Like, I'm a big fan of his uh, stand-up comedy, especially all of his recent stuff, but I don't like all the charity work that he does for, for, like, pets and animals and stuff like that. It's just like, come on. DJ Khaled didn't even try? Well, like, listen, I'm not... <laughs> I don't know DJ Khaled. I do find his... existence humorous. Everything I know about him makes me think we wouldn't... Like, he might be... If he invited me to dinner as a celebrity... Uh, most famous people, I would probably say... Yeah, I would clear some space out of my schedule. Not because I thought it was, like, you know, worthwhile for me on, like, a, a monetary level. Just because I think it would be interesting to talk to somebody that, you know, lives in a different world than me. DJ Khaled, I think I would say no. Or at least I wouldn't make much of an effort. Because, like, I mean, there's the, the it's, it has nothing to do with the fact that he said he doesn't perform cunnilingus. It has nothing to do with the fact that I don't really like his music. I saw him perform at the Overwatch League Grand Finals one year, and literally the whole concert was just him with a microphone saying, play another one. And then they played like the hook of a song that he was the producer on. And then he said, no, no, cut it after like 15 seconds and then said, hit him with another one. Like it wasn't even a concert. It was just like a hit clips montage of his own songs that he wasn't even really on. Really? Like it's the, the, the thing that really tilted me over the edge with DJ Khaled was when I saw the video of him at Salt Bay's restaurant, which is already like a red flag. And he was losing his mind over like a $500 cheeseburger that when you cut into it just oozes like an unbelievably disgusting amount of cheese. I'm not saying that he... <laughs> I'm being careful with the way that I phrase this, I guess. Um... I, he strikes me as kind of like, as garish, I suppose. Garish is the word I'm, I'm looking for. It's like he's outlandish and loud and non-subtle. And like these, they're not necessarily damning character flaws, but they're not, uh, they're not things that I would look for in, in, a, in a dining partner. Like they, they would not make a My Dinner with Andre with Wallace Shawn having dinner with DJ Khaled. Wallace Shawn would be. So anyway, DJ Khaled, you live in Miami. What are your thoughts on the Cuban diaspora and how it relates to mankind's search for meaning? And DJ Khaled would be like, I'll have the $500 cheeseburger, please. And yeah, extra gold foil. Hang on, hang on. Ew. Could be a great movie, though. That being said, I think if I went to Pappy Steakhouse, I would order the $1,000 Pappy Steak that comes in a, in a gold briefcase. <laughs> or a, a briefcase with gold LEDs on the inside. And then they sear it with a, with a branding iron and totally fucking ruin the meat. You've never seen the, the Pappy Steak video? I played it on my own stream illegally probably like five times. It's a bunch of, like, frat boys. They come out with a briefcase, open it up, and there's a, an enormous steak inside that costs $1,000. And they hit it with a branding iron, so it goes like... Tss. And the whole time... Ooh. The whole time they're going... Oh! 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 With the briefcase. Yes, I think DJ Khaled would be in my Nightmare Blunt rotation. I, I would say so. Again, there's probably people that are cool with it. Obviously, DJ Khaled has real friends. And I, I'm not even saying that facetiously. But, like, I don't want to smoke a bowl with DJ Khaled and then he starts, like, playing his own songs for me or something like that. Like, it's just not the... 
It's just not the vibe I'm looking for. Oh, fucking good son of a... I have no idea why he was at the Overwatch League Grand Finals. Like, reminds me of when we had Champions of Fire 1. And they were like, come to the after party. You get your picture taken with Chuck the Iceman Liddell. <laughs> oh, man. After a long weekend of playing Fruit Ninja on your Amazon Fire tablet, nothing takes the edge off like going into an ex insanely loud Las Vegas nightclub to get your picture taken with a UFC fighter who has no fucking idea who you are at all. <laughs> it's a fun event, though. Ooh. I think I'm too slow already. <laughs> Did you get a picture with him? No, I was late to get to the party because... I didn't want to go, <laughs> and then I was like, we should go, and then I tried to go in, and the guy was like, you need to take your hat off, and I was like, what? I thought the people in the club wear hats. I didn't realize that I had to take my hat off. I go, now I'm in the damn nightclub holding my baseball hat in my hands, wearing my branded Champions of Fire jacket. Like, what the fuck am I doing here, man? This is not my scene. I have fun, not at the club, but at the at Champions of Fire in general. It's just you know, just a weird vibe for me as a gamer. What if it was in Vancouver? I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't go. I mean, I, if, if they did Champions of Fire 3, which seems like at this... Well, Champions of Fire 3 North America, which seems at this point like it's not likely to happen because the last one was like four years ago. Um, I would definitely... I would try to make it work. And if it was in Vancouver, that would be a lot easier for me because I live here. What if you could meet the Sedin twins? I, I nothing but respect for the Sedin twins. I have a Henrik Sedin jersey. I wouldn't move my schedule around to to shake hands with the Sedins and say, "Hey guys, I loved you on the Canucks." Because like, they're just living their lives. I don't need to. I I think people think I'm a curmudgeon about society's addiction to technology. I'm. I'm not a curmudgeon. I just genuinely don't care. So when people are like, you know, oh, you wouldn't even like wait in a 30 minute long line to get your photo taken with Daniel Sedin. I wouldn't because like, I don't, what would I do with the photo? It adds, the photo adds nothing of value to my life. Like next time I see my mom, I'm going to take the photo out and be like, look at it. That's me. And that's Daniel Sedin. And she's going to be like, wow. And I'll be like, yep, that's the two of us. Close enough to be captured in the same aperture on my Samsung Galaxy camera. But obviously, like, I'm the idiot. Because people love photos, dude. That's way too slow to begin with. Now, Henrik! <laughs> Henrik, on the other hand, it was the same, like, I, I'm, this is not something that came to me later in life. Like, I was kind of like this as a kid, too. In second grade, when you did the book draft to see, like, who's going to read what for story time, people always went ape shit. Like, pack one, pick one. Give me, like, some Eric Carl book that's 90% pages, 10% words. I was always like, bro, nobody take Prince Caspian. I don't want to, I don't read books to see pictures. I, the pictures are just, they're taking up word space. And I'm kind of the same, like, in, or have, have always been the same in real life with respect to photos as well. I would rather read text than look at a photo most of the time. 
Would you talk to Dr. K? Is this like, I, is this a symptom of, of some kind of debilitating mental illness? Doesn't like pictures that much? Is that a, is it a red flag? What, what did I do to deserve this? The hell did I do? You'd rather read the description of a sunset? No, I mean, if you're like, you have to look at a picture of a sunset or read a description of a sunset, I would rather look at a picture, but I'm just going to look at it for like a second and be like, yeah, that's pretty. Like it does, I don't know. I would rather eat like a sandwich than look at a sunset for sure. Because you get the value of the food's taste and then also the sense of satisfaction from your stomach being full. I think maybe for other people, they like look at a photo of a sunset and they're like, it's satisfying to look at a photo. But then also there's like a, an after effect. Oh, well, this is bad. Um, where they're like, oh, I've, my mood has been lifted as a result. My mood is about the same as it always is. I've never looked at like a photo of a cat that is like up in the ceiling and says, I, Ken has cheeseburger. And been like, my day is better. I've looked at it and said, that's pretty funny. That's like one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my whole fucking life for sure. But then like I just go on with the rest of my day, I guess. No fog of war, only two players, static eight by eight grid. I think I'm just like, that's how much of a word cell I am. And I, I envy the shape rotators because I think shape rotators bring obvious value to society. And as a, as a word cell, you have to trick people with your words into thinking you bring value to society. I wish I had a little bit more shape rotation in me, but I've, I've always been, uh, I've always been very word celled. I'm big on sounds right now. New guy just dropped. Guy who's just just discovered music. I don't know if you guys have heard about this new thing. It's called music. You know what's crazy to think of? Like humans back in the in the hunter gatherer days. Can you imagine like running down prey on the savanna? And not having, like, a, a pump-up song blaring in your AirPods. Like, they were sincerely built different. Like, nowadays, I'm like, oh, I don't feel like I can push that hard on the Peloton unless they're playing, like, you know, Life on Mars by David Bowie. They're literally out there, like, outside, saber-toothed tigers, like, trying to eat them. And they got, they got no music, dude. And they just got to find their second wind. They, all they hear is... <sighs> That's crazy. I don't know how they did it. You remember high school? It is crazy. We used to just work out like in the gym in silence or just hearing like they'd have like three TV. Well, actually, they'd have like 20 TVs, but only one of them would have sound on. So you'd be like watching the, the news about the BP oil spill while you hear the laugh track from the Big Bang Theory, like seven TVs down. Or you'd only hear what everybody had, like what, what communal music was on in the gym, which was usually like a, a radio station or something like that. We've come a long way for sure. Your gym had TVs? Yeah, I used to do some jogging at a, at a Good Life Fitness in Kingston, Ontario. One of the major selling points was that they had like a, every treadmill had a TV up on the ceiling Oop. with a remote that you could adjust while you were watching, but you'd never have any sound. <laughs> but in, in like 2009, 2010, you were like, this is pretty good. It's not like the future, but it's at least like contemporary with the present. Me watching the, the, CEO of BP apologized 17 times uh, over the course of 60 days on TV for ruining the Gulf of Mexico while listening to 
Cavo Sapien by Wolf Parade at the same time on my on my Zoom. And being like, whoa, that was a really hard 22 minute jog. Ooh, okay, here we go. It's been a while. Smaller, smaller, smaller. <laughs> wearing puka shells I was never cool enough to wear puka shells unfortunately just didn't have the right honestly I, I didn't have the bangs for it you need the, the bangs bring the whole thing together you gotta have the either the curly down bangs or you gotta have some serious ski jump and I always just had like a little bit of a like a Martin short I would have killed to be able to pull off the puka shells You're right, I was just a two-shirt Marty. The short sleeve billabong over the long sleeve billabong. I'm trying to think what were the... When I was like a senior in college, what was the big drip? Definitely like those god-awful... Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Because uh, somebody's probably wearing one right now, like, what the fuck? They're, like, on the, on the subway on the way to work. I'm about to insult, like, their exact outfit. The new... I'm sorry. I, if this is you, I'm sorry. The newsboy caps, of which I have worn some in my day, because my mom told me they look cool. The newsboy caps are... I mean, and they might come back again. That's, a, it, it, that's the interesting thing about fashion, right? It all depends when you look at a photo. When we saw 50 Cent in a vest 10 sizes too small at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards in 2011 or whatever, we were like, yeah, that looks pretty cool. Now you look at it and you're like, what the hell was he thinking? May, may come a time... 2040, you look at that photo again and you're like, I gotta post this to r slash old school cool. 50 cent at the... Boy, I wish people wore fashion like this now. <laughs> he has so much class. All my high school classmates only have swag. Tiny, 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 tiny. Too tiny. Vans and Converse, pretty, pretty popular for sure. I'm trying to think. I don't know. I guess the answer is I never knew. Definitely insanely skinny jeans. I, I Honestly, I was gated away from like lots of fashion trends. I couldn't wear skinny jeans when skinny jeans were popular. Because, and like, I guess it's, it sounds like a flex, but at the time it was really annoying. My calves are too fucking big. So like in order for the jeans to be skinny in the in the thigh they were too small in the calf for me to even get them on over my shins so like it was not they, they just never worked Ooh. that's not happening never mind we're in just you just gotta time it right <laughs> same here but it was my penis <laughs> plus two plus two Khaki cargo shorts. Yeah, khaki cargo shorts. Those were those were a chick magnet back in the day for sure. Were they? No, not really. What did what do they say in uh super bad? I don't think anyone's gotten a hand job in cargo shorts since Nam. Does it listen? In hindsight, that really doesn't seem like the sort of thing that a 17-year-old high school senior would say in 2006, but still a great movie. Hang on, I need to focus. Stop distracting me. I used the input buffer on that one. Oh, I wasn't even close. Always remember the guy who I thought looked the coolest in high school. 
beanie in class, little bit of bangs tucked uh, under the beanie so you could see him. Short sleeve graphic shirt, zip up hoodie over top, not zipped or half zipped. And then the hoodie, the sleeves were slightly too long. So he cut out a little thumb hole to put his thumbs through. And you're gonna be like, oh, that's cringe. Dude was not cringing back in the day. Back, back in 05, 06, he was not cringing. Ooh, I'm way too slow. I'm thinking about that dude I wanted to have sexual intercourse with. <laughs> I mean, dress like. I mean... Don't crungo me. I'm an otter now, Harry. Please stop describing my exact outfit. Are you a time traveler from 2006? Because honestly, if I saw him now and he was wearing the same thing, I would probably be like, you know how in like This Is The End, when Gary King is still living like he did on high school graduation, but all of his old friends have like moved on necessarily to like the, uh, the next phases of their lives? You mean the world's end? What did I call it? Did I call it at the world's end, like Pirates of the Caribbean? This is the end? Oh, whatever. You know what I mean. Same sh same, almost exactly the same plot, honestly. Two completely different movies with completely different titles and almost exactly the same plot. Hang on, we could easily do this. I don't know what's wrong with me. They didn't have Chibli playing this against Bear, did they? Like, I mean, that's just not, that's just poor planning. They did? <laughs> Come on. And Justin? That's just not fair, man. You need a guy like you on Peloton that's just slightly faster than you? No, honestly, I think that I've realized mentally, you just are where you are, you know? I think the more you look for like a, like a cheat code, like, oh, I totally would have won this level faster if I had like some motivation or something. Oh, he always does better when he's singing. He's got to start singing again. Like the more pressure you put on yourself for that, that's, that's fool's gold, man. Instead, if you want to get better, don't look for a, like a cheat code. Just practice. Otherwise, just enjoy being like content where we are in Mario. I think we're doing pretty well. Like, we didn't beat it first try, obviously. We're, we're struggling a little bit. But at the same time, we're, uh, you know, it's the first time we've played in a while. I think we're, in a, we're at a reasonable level of skill for where we're at. And if we want to be better at Mario Maker, there's probably some steps we could take. But one of the biggest steps would be play more. You know, you can't just boot it up and be like, I'm the best in the world, you know? That was way too slow. It's like on the Peloton, you know? Apollo's got insane drive. He's not touching, you know, NL's Peloton records yet. It's not realistic. In six months, with, with some practice, he could be right in there, and I have no reason to believe that he won't be. But, you know, I don't, I don't care how many Eagles songs he puts on his playlist. There's just, like, there's, some, there's a mitochondrial difference right now. Same thing, you know, me up against uh, Squeaks in Mario, like Squeaks just doesn't have a chance. There's, there's a mitochondrial difference. So true, so true. I just gotta keep insulting Squeaks so he comes back to chat. Sure, I don't go to his chat that much, but that's because I don't go to Twitch that much because, I don't know if you know this, I have a child. Like, I'm a little busy. But I do miss him showing up and going, what the hell? Okay, I've lost a lot of speed there. Ghost Pepper, Ghost Pepper, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. 